About 10 years ago, I was living in a small town raising my children in rural British Columbia. And when you're an oncologist in a small town, people come up to you all the time at the supermarket or the drugstore or the dry cleaners and say, hey doc, how come there's so much cancer? My sister was diagnosed with leukemia and she's in a fight for her life. When this went on for a couple of years, I decided at a certain point that I would put on a series of free town hall lectures for the people in that town to talk about what is cancer, why is there so much cancer. At one of these talks, and it was in the winter of 2011, and it was a, a very well attended talk on prostate cancer, there was a man standing at the back of the room. He said, Doc, would you make a talk like this on cancer in firefighters? And I said, why? That's a lot of work. And he said, because firefighters are dying of cancer left and right, and nobody's doing anything to help us. A huge study came out, uh, published in The Lancet, in uh, describing cancer in firefighters who had responded to the, to the World Trade Center disaster. And what I noticed was that uh, in these firefighters, cancer jumped dramatically within the first seven years and they were very aggressive cancers in young firefighters uh, and they were up significantly when compared to the general public and more so when compared to firefighters who did not attend at ground zero. So I decided to go ahead and make this 50 minute lecture that this firefighter requested and the first place that I gave it was in a small town Port Alberni in uh, rural British Columbia and it was very well attended by some very appreciative firefighters, maybe 50 or 60 firefighters who encouraged me to keep working in this field but what I noticed was that there were very few female firefighters and when I subsequently gave this talk at larger venues, two or three hundred firefighters, I noticed that there would be only maybe five or six or maybe ten at most female firefighters. And I thought to myself, what if male firefighters are being diagnosed uh, and succumbing to cancer? What's happening to the female firefighters? How do we determine what happens to them? So my goal at that point was to try to find a female firefighter who had been diagnosed with cancer and see what her experiences have been like. And eventually I was directed to a senior firefighter, a captain at a large metropolitan fire department who had had breast cancer. She was young. She was extremely fit. She had run the Boston Marathon. Uh, she had a, was lean and ate a very clean diet. And yet she had been diagnosed with cancer and had, you know, difficult surgery and a recovery period. And my question to her was, what was the most difficult part about your diagnosis? Was it uh, the terror of finding out that you had cancer or was it the surgery uh, or the treatment afterwards? And she said something that really shocked me, that caught my attention. She said, no, the most difficult part of my diagnosis was trying to hide it from the rest of the department because firefighting is a male dominated profession and female firefighters come under intense scrutiny. They're watched very closely. So in order to get treated, I had booked time off under the pretext of going away on holidays and had my surgery and uh, all the other treatment required. And the most difficult part of my di diagnosis was going back to work and try and hide the fact that I'd had surgery for cancer because my job was to drive the truck and work the levers and that was the hardest part. And that got me very interested uh, in the plight of a female firefighter. We should do a study to describe what happens to a female firefighter, to examine it from the biological, psychological, social, and spiritual aspect of uh, what is involved for a female firefighter diagnosed with cancer. But how to do it? Because female firefighters, relatively speaking, are such a rare population that even large scientific studies that have been published finish off in their conclusion with the scientific lamentation that there are not enough female firefighters to draw any definitive conclusions. I read a publication by Robert Daniels from NIOSH who described cancer in firefighters 
and I became aware of the fact that there are over a million firefighters in the United States. And I did the statistics in my mind that if three to four percent of them were females, then there were probably, you know, between 30 and 40,000 female firefighters in the United States alone. And according to the most recent American cancer statistics, if a woman's lifetime risk of getting cancer is 45 percent, that would amount to 17 or 18,000 female firefighters that at some point during their life would be diagnosed. Then I noticed a landmark publication in the literature by Sarah Janke, who studied maternal and child health in female firefighters. And Sarah used a brilliant technique of an online self-report survey with snowball sampling techniques. And she was able to remarkably assemble a set of over 1,800 female firefighters and was able to report that, um, that preterm labor and miscarriage was very high. And I thought that would be the paradigm. That would be the ticket. We could use a similar online self-report survey with snowball sampling techniques to identify as many female firefighters as we could who had been injured on the job or who had suffered a diagnosis of cancer. Our study ran from June 2019 to July of 2020, and we were able to accrue over 1,300 uh, female firefighters in our uh, data set with a median age of 41 years from approximately 12 different countries. And we were able to uh, identify 256 cases of cancer or incipient cancer, which is the largest data set on cancer in female firefighters that has so far uh, been identified. Cancers of the breast, uterine cervix, melanoma, uterine cancer, and so forth. And 80% of these firefighters were still on active duty. So our team is currently analyzing a virtual mountain of data in a nutshell, uh, the essence of the study is that if a female firefighter is injured or gets a job-related cancer, to find out what she needs and supply it in terms of um, health care allocation or cancer presumption laws. As a civilized and enlightened society, we ought to be prepared to help the people that we expect to help us. So we have an excellent research team that consists of Ian Pike, who is a senior um, scientist, um, and Kate Turcott at the British Columbia Injury Research and Prevention Unit, and uh, retired fire chief Len Garris, and active fire chief Larry Thomas from the Surrey Fire Service. And we've also had excellent encouragement from Lori Moore Merrill, who when the study started was with the International Association of Firefighters. So we look forward to analyzing our data and reporting it to you soon in one of our large peer-reviewed journals. Thank you.